In this video, we're going to discuss how to effectively use a repeat loop. Let's go ahead and go into Macro Express. I'm just going to use the default path and the default macro file uh, to give you an example. And I'm also going to create a new macro by right-clicking and pressing New Macro. On the activation, I'm going to set to No Activation and go to the Scripting Editor. A repeat option allows you to instruct Macro Express to keep repeating the same options over and over. Let me give you an example of why this would be beneficial. Let's say that the person running the macro is asked for some input and we store that in a string or an invisible storage container called T1 in Macro Express. Well, it's going to continue asking that user the same question over until the user gives us the information that we want. So first we need to start out with uh, using our repeat function. And I would put some remarks in there just so that you know where you are in your script. From here we can type in something like repeat loop example. And I would always recommend using re, uh, remarks because it allows you to explain your macro for further editing in the future, which is usually the case with macros because um, applications that you're writing macros to interface with will change, and so will uh, Windows. Our next line of code that we want to put in is repeat. And this will start the repeat, so it's called repeat start. And if we double click on this, we have quite a few different options on how we want this to repeat. Our first option is start repeat. The repeat count means that it's going to repeat the set of instructions located in the repeat and the repeat end brace for as many times as we specify in this repeat count. The repeat start allows us to tell what number uh, the repeat will start on. And the reason why they have the repeat start and the repeat step is because we can actually place those in a variable so that we know uh, what loop our script is currently on. Our next option is start repeat with prompt. This means that it will ask every time how many times you would like to repeat the script. You can also place the counter in the variable, which acts the same as the start repeat, in that you were creating a function with a repeat and a repeat end that had something that said if variable n1 uh, was equal to 5, then act this way instead of this way. This can be accomplished using the place counter and variable. Our next option is start repeat with variable. Now the difference between the prompt and the variable is because we can actually tell Macro Express to define a variable without prompting the user every time. Meaning simply that in my macro script I can actually tell Macro Express to define that variable instead of asking the user uh, for input. Our next choice is repeat until. And this is the one that we're going to use in this example. The reason being is we are going to tell uh, variable t1 has to be equal to a certain word in order to repeat exit, which means that the repeat option will exit out of its continuous loop when it sees that word. And I'll explain this one more. Let's go to the rest of them just so that we can uh, have a full rundown. The repeat with folder. Repeat with folder is really nice to have because it allows us to specify a specific directory and then every time this repeat runs it will return the file name or the folder name located in that directory. So let's do an example here. If we click browse and we go to uh, my documents and I'm just going to minimize uh, Macro Express so I can show you what's located in my documents. I currently have three folders and one file. Let's go ahead and close this back out and go back into Macro Express. Now, if I just want Macro Express to return the file names and not the folders, I would select Return Files. If I want it to return the folders, I would select Folders. Now, let's say that you just wanted to run the macro uh, repeat loop 
for as long as there's folders in that directory. You don't actually care about the name of the folder, then you would leave this place name in blank. Whereas if you do want to know the name, you would select a variable to put that uh, information in. So every time that repeat reruns, it's going to say, okay, this information will now go into T1. Okay, so now Macro Express needs to know some more information. Do we want to capture the name of the folders located in that directory, or do we want to capture the full file path, which includes the name of the directory? Let me elaborate a little bit more on that. If I'm capturing the full name only, and in this path, it has a folder called My Pictures. Well, every time this repeat loop runs, it will return that name of any folders located in that directory only. So it would say My Pictures. If we return the full file path, it's going to not only return the folder where that directory is located, but it's also going to return the folder name of My Pictures. Let's try this just so you can see an example of what I'm referring to. Let's go ahead and press OK. And I need to add a repeat end so that this uh, loop ends. And I'm going to add a dialog with a text box display and then return uh, percent %t1. That t needs to be capitalized and then another percent. What this will do is and then I need to move this up. I can press control up uh, to move that piece of the code uh, further up in the macro file. Okay, so let's recap on what I just did. The repeat with folder is going to return any values or uh, folders and place those values into percent %t1. It's also going to continue running the script for as many directories are that are in my documents folder, which is what I specified in the path to look for in that uh, repeat loop. Next, we have a text box display, which is going to return to us percent %t1, which is, in a way, an invisible storage container of a string, which means any, any text or numbers uh, that I specify or that the macro returns to me. Finally, we have a repeat end, which is going to end this loop by saying, okay, when, when, you repeat, when you reach this point, go back to the first repeat if uh, you need to, otherwise uh, continue on with the script. Let's go ahead and press play so that we can see what happens. It now returns to me my absolute path and my folder name. If I press OK, it's going to repeat again because I have multiple folders in that directory and it returns my received files. If I press OK one, one more time, the macro now ends. Let's go ahead and minimize this and go back into my documents. If you notice, I have four items listed. However, I only have three folders, which is what I told my repeat loop to look for. If I go back into the repeat with folder, you'll notice that it's looking for folders instead of files. If I did specify files, it would then just return that one file since that's the only file located in my documents directory. On Acro Express, a lot of the commands that you find located in the software can be actually found in multiple locations. This end repeat is the same as the end repeat located in the commands uh, task pane. The next function, repeat counter, has actually been removed from Acro Express. I recommend that you don't use it. The reason why it still exists is for backwards compatibility. If you want more information on repeat counter, please review the book. Our next option is repeat exit. The difference between repeat exit and end repeat is a repeat exit will actually break out of a loop. In that I mean a start repeat is at the beginning of some type of repeat, uh, repeating loop whereas the end repeat is at the end of the loop stating to Macro Express to stop doing that loop. Well, repeat exit can be used if maybe you have an if statement in your loop saying if uh, t1 equals 5, then repeat exit so that it breaks a loop. For information on the repeat with windows and the repeat with processes options, please review the book. 
Um, I'm not going to cover those in this video just because it kind of go, falls outside of the scope of this uh, tutorial. And I'm going to set this back on what I originally had, uh, which is repeat with folder. This concludes our video.